Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. You know Jeannie keeps telling me that her hugs and kisses is really popular <laughs> but luckily I have selective hearing. <laughs> I love denial. Without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Hey welcome back to the Crochet Crowdos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Texture World Crochet Blanket. Fabulous design. Stitch sampler this is. <laughs> I sound like Yoda because it's backwards and what we have here is a beautiful texture. This is in my wheelhouse. This has me like all squirming in my chair. I absolutely love stitch samplers because I get to learn new stitches as I go. It's using Karen Tea Cakes and we only are using two different types of balls and in the balls they change color on its own. So when you see the multiple color those are existing in one ball. So we have five cakes of the marine green and then five cakes of sunset stroll and it's very strategic on how those are changing color. So even though there's a section of the same ball the yarn can change color on its own too. So it's really quite neat. So this one here has an issue and we're gonna talk about that next. Just as a friendly reminder we do have video chapters so if you wanna skip me from blabbing you can do that and what I'm going to cover now is crochet gauge. This particular type, type of yarn has me always crocheting really tight. So it's recommending an eight millimeter size L crochet hook but for me if I use this this blanket will only be 36 inches wide versus 50 and what I had to do is do a gauge check and I realized that I need to use this big bad boy here in order to match the gauge that is recommending here on the pattern. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm going to take you extensively through there. If you don't wanna do a gauge check it's up to you but if you're not getting the right size chances are the gauge check is going to be your issue. So let's do a gauge check. In this particular pattern they're telling us to use an eight millimeter size L crochet hook or a size needed to obtain the gauge. Now each one of us crocheted slightly different from each other so some of us are loose, some of us are too tight and some of us are just right. So in the larger thicker yarns like this one I'm always a tight crocheter so I have to always watch the particular gauge when it comes to this. So just because it suggests eight millimeter doesn't mean that I'm gonna get to the right size. So this blanket here is 50 and a half inches wide. So if I am not following the gauge my blanket could either be too big or it could be too small. If it's too big it'll mean that I'll use more yarn and if it's too small I will probably have a yarn, I'll have yarn le definitely left over but then I will have a size that may not be usable. So what this particular design is and you'll see these on the yarn inspirations patterns is that it says seven single crochets in eight rows equals four inches. Let me break that down for you. So by turning the page over here. So we have a square. So the goal is in the particular square is that we need to have seven single crochets in the width and then we have to have eight rows in the height. And together this is a four inch by four inch. So our goal is just to check this. Now here's what I do with the particular math. It says that there's seven single crochets. If I match that exactly and my gauge is not matching I'm not gonna know how many stitches that I need in order to get to the right size. So the goal for me is to and this is what I do for myself is that I want three extra single crochets in order to work with it so that I can see the size and if it is a few extra stitches big deal right. You're not gonna waste the yarn you can just rip it back out. So if I want this swatch just to be ten single crochets wide I'm going to have to chain a total of 11. And the reason for that is that when you single crochet on a chain it's always single crochet in the second chain from the hook so therefore you'll end up with 10 single crochets. So that's what I would look for. So if your gauge happened to say that it was nine single crochets and I wanna add three more so nine so 10, 11 and 12 I wanna chain 13 so that I can have the three extra. So that's my goal. So what I want to do is that I want to pick up the yarn that they're suggesting and if you are substituting the yarn the gaze check is the only way to do it. So I get a ton of emails saying the size was never matching and then I asked if you checked a gauge and that's when you hear crickets. So what I want to do is that I want to show you how to make a gauge based on this and I know in advance that my hook is too small because this yarn is thicker and I'm tighter but I'm gonna demonstrate it anyway because eventually for me I have to switch all the way to this thick hook in order to get to the size. Yes it can be that drastic. So let's do 
a swatch. Now you don't need to waste yarn because after you're done you can just frog it out and if you're new to crochet it means to rip it, rip it. Get it? Get it? <laughs> okay so we're gonna just create a, a slip knot to begin and remember what I said I want 10 single crochets to be across uh, so that I can see how much extra that I would need, possibly need and so then what I will do is that if I want 10 single crochets I have to add an extra chain to that number so it has to be 11. So let's chain 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Now it's hard to know because of your position now but this chain feels very long. Remember that the chain always condenses down. So what I want to do is second chain from the hook and I want to single crochet going all the way back across and by using the second chain from the hook it eliminates one of those numbers from the chain so I should have 10 single crochets. And you will see that this long chain will get smaller and smaller in the distance and that's what we want to pay attention to the most. Now coming up to the end of the row I want to begin this again but you don't have to chain of course but you're just gonna turn your work and single crochet across. So turn, so chain one and then single crochet in each of the stitches all the way. And you're going to notice that it will balance out and you will continue to make as many rows as you need to get yourself to four inches in the height. And then that's when the fun begins of the measurements to ch double check your work. So I'm gonna go all the way across and then once I'm there I'm gonna turn my work, chain one and do one single crochet in each. So continue to make as many rows as you need to get to four inches. You can always do four and a half if you're, if you would like to. It's up to you. You're not gonna waste this yarn and that's when I'm gonna pick you up next because we're gonna take a look at the measurement and I'm going to show you the difference then of the two different sizes because this gauge I know is too small for myself because I've already checked. So I will see you back here in just a moment. So here's my swatch. I just roughly kind of guessed where four inches is but I did have my tape measure just to double check. So what I want to do to check the gauge is that I want to count the number of stitches that appear between a four inch span. So you can see the stitch work and just grab the, the middle of the, the swatch and you need to count the number of stitches that are between the uh, one inch and four. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I should have only seven in a four inch stand and you can see that there's two extra. So I have a total of nine stitches that equals four inches. This means that this hook is too small to match the exact sizing of this particular blanket and my blanket will be grossly um, too small. So what I want to do is that I want to guess and I want to guess the next size hook. So I thought that was pretty drastic on missing two stitches out of this so I went to a 12 millimeter. So the number of sizes to increase is pretty much a guess and you just have to pull this back out your work here and then just retry again in order to get to the four inches uh, in the span. So it has to be only seven single crochets. So just for kicks I'm going to check the height. So you can just turn it and you wanna count the number of rows in a four inch span. So in my case you can see that there's two, four, six and eight. So you can see that the number of rows is correct but the number of stitches in the width is wrong. So you wanna focus on the number of stitches in the width the most because that's what's gonna be more critical. So if your pattern is not long enough you can always add more to it but you can never add to the width of it um, if you're going in this concept unless you're gonna do a wicked border or something. So what I'm going to do for tutorial purposes is that I'm gonna cut this yarn but you could just frog it back out to rip it, rip it. Just pull it all out and just retry and what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna show you the difference because I eventually went to a 12 millimeter that was my next guess based on experience and so I will do the exact same thing but with a thicker hook just to test where I'm gonna land next time.
So the trick to the gauging is the number of stitches in the four inches. So for example, let's just say I had six single crochets and that was where my four inches were. That means that my hook is way too big and I'm gonna have to decrease the hook and guess what size hook that I would have to go down by. But in my case because this here did not even hit it because I was um, I was two inch or two stitches short of the four inches it means that my hook is too small. So that's how you adjust and it's just a rough guess really. So let's move on to doing another swatch. So using a next size up that you think I thought that 10 millimeter was not gonna be enough so I went all the way to 12. It's better to jump all the way higher just to see where you're gonna land and some th in my case it worked. So what I want to do is that I wanna chain my 11 again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Can I show you something? Look how much bigger that is. Right. So now second chain from the hook you wanna single crochet yourself across. I can already tell that the stitches are much looser than they were on the original one I just did. So what I want to do is follow the same practices of going back and forth in the rows. So when I'm at the end of the row I'm just gonna turn chain one and single crochet across and I am going to single crochet um, the number of rows that it will take to get to four inches just like before. This sample is, uh, this particular swatch is a lot more pliable in my hands. The other one was more stiff so that was also my indication that I might have been too tight with the, the recommended hook because I'm, I'm normally a tight crochet with this thick yarn. So turning your work, chain one and one single crochet. So I'll meet you when we hit four inches in just a few moments from now and that's where I'm gonna pick you up on the next story. So here is my new swatch. So this is what I have and I, it's much bigger than the original that I just did. You can see that. So what I want to do is take my measurement then again of the four inch span and count the number of single crochets between the span. So I'm gonna count. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there's now seven single crochets in this in the four inch span. This means that this gauge is correct. Now I can check the height as well. And so I wanna check and in a four inch span there you go. Two, four, six, and eight rows. So the way that the stitches look they're in groups of two. That's how I do that. So I know that even though the hook was recommended for this for the pattern in order to match the gauge as it's saying I have to increase my hook and the difference is actually quite stunning. If I would've used this hook and not check my gauge the blanket would only be 36 inches wide. I'm not fooling you versus the 50 and a half inches that it should be. So if you think there's that much of a difference here just in this small swatch when you combine it with the entire afghan width it can be significantly smaller. So that's how you're gonna check your gauge and then we're gonna move on in the pattern as we continue our journey. If you really love this pattern and you wanna change it to any size the multiples are eight plus seven. So you will chain in eight, 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 eight and when you're satisfied with the width of it just add seven more chains and you'll have the balance so that you can be able to do this. So it's a really neat concept in order for you to do it. So if you wanna switch it down to a uh, uh, four ply medium weight yarn you can do that. You just have to change your chain counts if you want something that's gonna be workable for you. So we're going to cover this next. I am going to be using Red Heart Super Saver Ogo here on camera with a six millimeter size J hook to demonstrate the stitch work and I'll take you through the repeat of that. So without further ado let's head on into that next. Okay are you ready to play? I certainly am. So let's begin. So using the recommended hook size with the L hook or eight millimeter you can chain a total of 87. Make sure you've done your gauge check just to make sure that you are gonna get the right size. For everybody else that would like to change the size you can chain in multiples of eight plus seven. So here's what you'll do. So you'll chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Are you happy with the width? Yes or no? If not add another eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So then you just keep on going. Please do not email me to ask me the chain count for certain sizes. All you just need to do is put this chain up to something that you want to match to like maybe a queen size blanket or a throw or whatever and just lay it down on top and it, you'll get roughly the same size as long as you stay in the multiples. Once you're happy with the width of this you are just going to chain a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7. So it's your choice. Either chain 87 or do the multiples of 8 plus 7 and then we're gonna be ready to go on row number 1. Let's begin row number 1. You're going to start off and you go second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So 1 and 2 and get the back hump of the chain and you are going to single crochet yourself across the chain itself. If you stay on the back hump it actually looks a lot nicer as a finished edge and that's something that you can decide for yourself. So please just single crochet across your chain and then we're gonna be getting into the starting of the repeat of the pattern from that point. I'll be back in a moment. Once you come all the way across your chain that's it. That's row number one. Turn your work and let's begin row number two. Let's go to the diagram next. So we're going to start row number two. So rows number two, three, four and five are all the same. So all three, all four of those rows are the same. So in the instructions at the time of filming this row number three is missing from the instruction. It's meant to say row uh, second two fourth rows not second and fourth rows. So we're going to begin this. Now I put a line here and here and here and that is indicating when the color is going to change. So I did that for myself to keep myself on track. So if you would like to do that that's where you're going to do it at that point. So what I want to do here is that we're going to start off and we'll chain one and we'll do a single crochet in the first one and then a treble in the next. We're looking at the right side of the project so when those trebles are done you wanna use your finger and pop it out towards, towards you be, to keep it to, to the right side. Once you begin to do this you'll know what is the right side and wrong side immediately after this point. Let's begin rows number two. So rows number two all the way through 19 is the repeat for the entire concept and then you just repeat that until you're satisfied. So let's continue to row number two. Let's begin row number two. You're gonna chain up one and in the first one here you're going to single crochet. The next one is going to be a treble. So watch what I do. You're gonna wrap twice and going into the same stitch or sorry the next stitch and in, pull through, pull through two and two and two. That's a treble. But what I want you to do is that you wanna keep what the side that you're looking at to be the popping side for the texture. So when you squat this, squat it so the stitch stays in front of you. Don't let it go in behind in this particular row. So just let it squat in front of you and grab the next stitch. And make sure that next stitch is a little bit tight so that it keeps squatting on the front side of the work. Okay, so every other stitch is, uh, is going to be a treble. So it trebles next and squat it towards you and the next one is a single. And you wanna do this all the way across. So the next one is a treble and squat it down and keep it tight. So the texture stays on this side. So the back side should be flat. So do this all the way across. The very last stitch should be a treble and that's where I'm gonna pick you up next. So please go across. I'll see you at the end of the row. So I'm coming up all the way across. The very last one will be a treble. The last one feels like it's kind of awkward and out of place but just bear with it and just go with the pattern because it really doesn't squat. Okay, just fake it or make it. So let's turn our work and begin row number three, four and five. So rows number three, four and five are all gonna be the same as what you just did. I'm just gonna review it one more time. So you start off and see how this is a treble. You're just going to match it with a single crochet on the top and the next one and see how it's squatted. That one has to be a treble. Now because you're looking at the wrong side of the project now when you squat it, squat it so that that pops to the back and it naturally wants to anyway. So and then single crochet the next. So you wanna keep all that texture on the other side. So the next one here, see this is a single. So it's going to be a treble that goes in and then squat it and single into the next treble that's available to you. So you're basically matching the stitches to each other so that these are just offset a little bit. Okay, so the next one is a treble and then squat it down like that. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do rows number three, four and five. This is this whole section and I'm gonna pick you up at the end of number five where we're gonna change the color just to make sure that we're keeping alignment with the pattern. I'll be right back in a moment. I'm just starting now row number four. Don't forget that when you're looking at the right side of the project that you are going to squat it and keep it tight so that the texture still stays on the front side. So just keep an eye when you're on the back side or the front side of the work and make sure that the texture is going to favor. See I let it fall to the back. Use your finger, push it out, keep it tight 
and keep it within the front of the project. Please continue. I'll see you at the end of number five in a moment. I'm now at the end of the fifth row. I'm looking at the back side of the work. Okay, we're keeping in count. So what I want you to know is that I'm going to finish this yarn off. I do it slightly different than what the pattern would suggest but this is the way I prefer to do it. And I'm just gonna weave in the ends and I will use a tapestry needle later to be able to um, final those in. What I'm going to do is just turn my work and you see all the texture is on this side of the project which is awesome. And we're going to then begin and we're gonna start with row number six. And I'm going to start with a new color and just create a slip knot. I do it that for security and I'm paranoid things fall out. So what I want to do is attach this to the top of the first treble. Okay, this is a single, this is the treble and I'm going to attach it and that's where my story is gonna begin. Now before I begin, when I attach it, I'm just gonna pull through and then hold and I'll bring you back to the diagram next. So you should know that every time that there's an even number here, this means that it's the right side of the work. Okay, so if you wanna put in right side, RS for right side, you can do that. So row number six, we're gonna start off with some half double crochets. Whenever you chain two in this, in this particular pattern, it does not count as a stitch, so it's a builder. And then each one of these stitches is going to have a half double crochet in it. It's going to be on row number seven, eight and nine is and ten actually all four of those rows are gonna create the texture of the ribbing effect that you see within the blanket. So let's get started with number six and get ourselves set up because we need to have that in place before we can actually do the really fun stuff. Let's begin number six. Okay let's begin number six. You're gonna chain two. This is not a stitch it's a builder and in the same one that you did the join with I want you to do a half double crochet. Go right up over top of that straggler, catch it in behind and right underneath the stitch so that you can secure it later. You'll start in with the next single crochet and half double crochet and so every stitch is gonna be half double crochet going for, uh, forward in this one. So please do this all the way for number six and meet me at the end of number six in a moment. I'll see you there in a second. Coming all the way across, you're just going to half double crochet right to the end, turn your work and you're looking at the wrong side of the project which is awesome because number seven and all the odd numbers are the wrong side. Let's begin and take a look at the diagram once again. In the diagram number seven, eight, nine and ten are this ribbing effect that you see. Now the ribbing effect is done on both uh, or all of these four rows but you gotta pay attention to what is the right side of it. So we're currently on the wrong side of the project and it'll be very obvious in your hands what you're looking at. So when you start off you're gonna chain two. Remember that doesn't count as anything and you were going to double, sorry you're gonna half double crochet. Everything is in sets of four from that point so there's gonna be four of these and if you're not sure what this is you can look at your diagram information here. This is called the stitch key. So the first four are uh, a front post double crochet. The next four are back so front, back and front. So you notice that this is a front here on the edge. This will also be a front on the edge here for balance. That's why it's multiples of eight plus seven. I originally thought it was multiples of four uh, when I was doing the original filming. So once we get that established you're gonna be able to see what this is and the next three rows just a matter of slamming into position as you do it. Let's begin row number seven. Let's begin row number seven. Chain two does not count as anything and in the same one that you're looking at here you're going to put in a half double crochet. Now the next four in a row here are each going to be a front post double crochet. So to wrap the hook and just dive in between the post and then back out the other side of the post. Y yarn over, pull through, pull through two and two. So you're grabbing it by the post which is gonna create the texture. So you'll do that another, another time. So you do it this three in a row. Okay, so with the original one plus these three you have your total of four. Now the next four that you have are each going to be a back post double crochet. So wrap in the hook, come from the back side in between the posts and then pop it back out to the back. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two and two. So you wanna do a total of four of those all together. So from the back, pop it to the back. Okay, wrap from the back Keep it on the back side. 
and once those four are done you're gonna switch back to front post double crochet for the next four. And you're gonna do this all the way across. So front post. This is really rich in texture. It looks like basket weave. Or this is the technique to achieve basket weave you should know. So then once those four are done the next four have to be from the back. And you're gonna continue this all the way across and maybe at the end of your row in a moment. When you get to the end of the row the last five stitches will remain. So the first four are just keeping in count and they'll be the front post double crochets that you want that you want. And don't get confused by all this extra looking here. This is just one stitch. It's the builder plus the first half double crochet. So you're just gonna have double crochet in the top of that to have the balance. And so that's what it will look like. So let's turn our work and do row number eight, nine, and ten. Let's turn. For rows number eight, nine, and ten you're going to match exactly what you see. You can see what's in the front here. You can see what's in the back. Just match it. That's all you gotta do. So you're gonna chain two and you're just gonna have double crochet in the same one right at the beginning. So that's always gonna be the same. So look at this stitch. Is it in the front or is it in the back? Did you say it's in the back? You should say it's in the back. It's in the back. So keep those in the back. So these four have to be a back post double crochet to keep that momentum going. So you're matching what you see instead of changing the direction. You get basket weave if you change that location and make it a front if it's currently on the back. So these are in the front. So keep those as a front post double crochet. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do this for rows number eight, nine, and ten. And then that's where you're gonna meet me at the end of number ten. And we're going to be changing our yarn back to the other ball as well. So it's a nice easy way to just look at it and examine. And you can put the pattern down and just enjoy the stitching journey. So please now do rows number eight, nine, and ten. And I'll see you back here in a moment. So I'm now here at the end of number ten. You'll notice that it's contracting. That's a normal thing with this particular stitch. You just gotta stretch it out a little bit and blocking at the end of the project also helps that too. So blocking means that you'll damp it and lay it flat, stretch it out and let it dry. So and when I say damp it, I'm not saying like soak it in a tub of water, just spray it with so the sprayer. We have videos on blocking. You can steam block it too. So you wanna finish that yarn and we're going to move on then to the next section and change it out and we're gonna begin number 11 in a moment and 11 will be on the wrong side of the work. We're currently looking at the right side of the project and I can tell because this is all bumpy which it's not on the back. So let's begin number 11. So rows number 11 12, 13, 14, and 15 is the next section here. This is also known as like an arrow stitch. You can kind of see that there. It's close to it. It's not quite that but it's pretty close. So what I want to do is that I wanna start off with the single crochet that allows it to stabilize and then that's why there's a single crochet in between these pieces. So you're gonna single and then you'll create this. This is opposite to what you see here. So we're gonna be covering that when we get there. So just keep an eye on the right side and the wrong side of the project and we're gonna begin row number 11. So just join your new yarn and we're gonna start number 11 with single crochet. Let's begin row number 11. Make sure you join your yarn and you'll be at the top of the last half double crochet. Make sure you go right into the stitch work itself to hold it. Attach and in this case you wanna chain one and in the same half double crochet and every stitch you want to single crochet across and you'll notice that this will push it back outward where it was contracting. The last uh, basket weave concept what that does is that it's great for hats and anything with elasticity. Um, that's why they use that a lot. Keep those stragglers to the wrong side of the work which is currently what I'm looking at and you can always tell by the beginning section if you're on the right side or the wrong side. So single crochet yourself all the way across for row number 11. Okay we're now at the end of row number 11. Let's go back to the diagram and let's examine what we're gonna do next. Let's begin number 12 by looking at it here and we have chain three which will count as your first double crochet. You were then going to skip one, two, three stitches and you're going to treble in the fourth stitch away. Now these ones here see how that they're blanked out like they're more gray. Those three are going to be behind this. So you're gonna reach and just keep this in the front and do those three that you skipped with double crochet. 
Then to restart again you're going to skip the next three. So one, two, three, treble into the fourth and then again keep those double crochets in behind and you'll do this all the way across with the a double crochet right in the very last one. Let's begin number 12. Let's begin number 12. Make sure that you are looking at the right side of the project. It matters. So you're gonna chain three and you should be anyway if you're keeping in counts. So you want to skip the first three. So this is your first stitch. So you're gonna skip the first three. So one, two, three. The skipping of the first one, this is where the first double crochet is. So that's not one you're skipping. You're skipping one, two, and three. And you're going to treble into the fourth one away. So wrap the hook twice. And that's gonna lean back over towards the edge. The other three that you just skipped is where you're going to place in a double crochet. So work keeping this in front. So when you reach keep that in front and just double crochet into those skipped ones that you did. Isn't that neat? So those are now in up here behind it and that's why it's grayed out in the pattern. So to start the next one you skip one, two, three, go to the fourth. Do you see how this is lined up like that? That makes sense right? Cause it's all in sets of four. So you're gonna treble into the fourth one away and then you're going to double into the ones that you skipped keeping that treble in the front of the project. And I need you to do that all the way across and this will take you to the very last stitch of just being a double crochet on its own. I'll demonstrate one more time. So wrap the hook twice and count. One, two, three, go to the fourth. And if you're looking at the pattern below you can clearly see where it is too. The designer has done a great job with this particular one with making it easier to count. And then you double crochet into the ones that are sitting in behind. Please do this and I will be back in just a moment. Once you're coming all the way across the last time that you do this section the very last one will be a double crochet on its own and that'll help stabilize it. See that? Now you're gonna turn your work and let's do row number 13. 13 is going to be the single crochet that you already know so chain up one and put in a single crochet in each one of the stitches all the way back across and I'll meet you at the end of number um, 13 in a moment. I'm now at the end of number 13. You're gonna turn your work and we're going to start this arrow stitching again but it's done slightly different this time for row number 14. In row number 14 we're going to chain three which will count as your first double crochet and then you're going to skip this stitch here the next one and you're going to double crochet in the next three after that. The treble is then gonna lie in front and you're gonna capture the one that you skipped so that it stays on the front side of the work to create the arrow look. So to restart again you'll skip the next one double crochet in the next three and then treble into the one you skipped and you'll do that all the way across with one double crochet at the end and I'll be back in a moment as we start row number 14. Let's begin number 14. Chain up three counts as your first double crochet. You are going to skip the very next stitch and you're going to double crochet the next three. So one, two, and three. The next stitch is gonna be a treble and it will come into this one that you've skipped. So you're gonna wrap the hook, stay on the front side of the work. So just come in and just grab it like that. I'll show it to you a couple times. And you're going to treble crochet that. And when that's done, when you're done with it, it should stay on the front side of the work. So to start the next section, you're gonna skip the first one and double crochet in the next three. So we have one, two and three and then the next one is the treble into the one you skipped. And you keep doing that all the way across. So skip the next one and double crochet in the next three. One, two and three and then treble into the one you skipped. And I need you to do this all the way across. This is row number 14 and I'll be back in just a moment. So as you're coming to the very last one here you're just still continuing and then there will be a double crochet into the very last stitch that's available to you. Like that. And so it should be opposite to each other like a mirror and that's what you're gonna do and you're gonna turn your work and begin number 15 which is the last part for this color. Let's begin number 15. 
In row number 15 you're gonna chain up one and you'll apply one single crochet into each one of the stitches all the way across and then we're gonna end this color and bring back the other color as we continue our journey. So please one single crochet in each stitch across. I'll be back in a moment. At the end of number 15 here you're going to end this yarn and we're going to start the last section here and we're going to start with row number 16 next and we'll go back to the diagram. The last section of this before the repeat finishes is number 16 all the way through 19. The first time it's going to be these popcorns using half double crochet and you can count the number of stems on there to realize that there's four half double crochets that make a popcorn. So you're gonna chain two does not count as anything and you'll just half double crochet the first two. Then once that's in you'll popcorn into the next. Then you'll do the next three of half double crochets popcorn into the next. And that's one thing that we have to finish. So make sure that when you do a popcorn you will do a chain one to close it which I will demonstrate and you will notice that the next time we do popcorns in row number 18 is slightly changing the location for that and that's desirable as well. Let's begin number 16 next. Let's begin number 16 starting with new yarn with the last um, single crochet. You're looking at the good side of the project and I can tell that not only by the look but it's also it's an even number which is also the right side in this particular example. So attach it, chain one and what you need to do then is that you're going to chain another. So attach it and do a total of chain two. That doesn't count as anything, it's just a builder. And you're going to half double crochet that one plus the next one so that there's two in a row. The next one is a popcorn. To do the popcorn you're going to apply four half double crochets. So you're gonna count those up together. So one, two, three and four. Once that's done release it here and come to the first one of the grouping of four. You can count it backward if you don't see it. It's the fourth one. Come from the front to the back, grab the loop, finish it, so pull it through and chain one to lock it so that it stays puffy. And then you'll start and the next three will be each a half double crochet. So one, two, and three in a row. So the next one has to be a popcorn again. So apply four half double crochets in that same stitch. So one, two, three and four. Release it. Go to the first one of the grouping of four. Pull through. Chain one to lock it and then do the next three. So I want you to do this all the way across. Just remember that there's three that separate them and I will be back at the end of the row in just a moment. And coming all the way across the last three stitches after the final popcorn is each one half double crochet. One, two and three. And that's what it looks like. So you're gonna turn your work and let's do row number 17. Let's do row number 17. Just chain up one and do one single into each. Uh, just keep an eye on the count so that when you hit there, so I had three half double crochets in a row, so I'll have three singles. So just don't add an extra stitch when you see these popcorns. So right at the top of the popcorn is one single and then remember that you have three halves that separate those. So we have one, two and three. So make sure that you just keep an eye on the count so that you don't add any extra stitches because it's easy to happen on popcorns. And so do you see where the next one is gonna be? There's one, two and three that you have and then your popcorn. So you wanna go in your popcorn. One, two, three. So let's do this all the way across of single crochet and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, at the end of number 17 you're gonna turn. So we're gonna have our popcorns going in for the number 18. Let's talk about that next. Let's talk about number 18. So 18 we're gonna have a popcorn that appears between these two and here and then every one in between. So you're not gonna have a popcorn that appears before the other one on an edge if that makes any sense. So you're gonna begin and you're gonna chain two which doesn't count as anything and in this case there's going to be four half double crochets in a row. So we have one, two, three and four. And then this allows us to get those popcorns to be in between the other two. So the, the popcorn is in the next one so there's four halves in the same one. And then they're still separated by threes after that. So just get your first popcorn in just to establish it. Chain one to lock it and then the next three are each half double crochets. So there's still half double crochets that separate these things from each other 
and now because we started a little bit later they will all appear in between the other two are uh, the other two like and visual was. So the continue that all the way across with your popcorns and your three half double crochets that match them and at the end there's gonna be more extra left over so that you don't have one that appears after this one here. So continue sorry continue this and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way across and number 18 here the last five are each going to be a half double crochet after the last popcorn. So one, two, three, four, and five. So now you're gonna turn your work and let's do the last one in the multiple and it's number 19. 19 nice and simple just chain up one and apply one uh, d sorry one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. You're going to want to end your color at the end of this so that when you start the repeat then of going all the way through two through nine two through nineteen that you have the right color to begin on row number two. So end your color at the end of this and I'll be right back in a moment. So this is the end of number nineteen. So you'll wanna fasten that yarn off and start a new yarn and start on row number two all over again. Number two starts immediately with those trebles and those singles that we had already before and it's just using the different color as you, as you did it before. So you can just follow now and you're gonna do rows number two through nineteen until the project matches about sixty inches in the, in the length of it and then that's where you're gonna end. We also then have a uh, side edging on both sides only. So we're not gonna touch the top edging. We're only gonna touch the side and I'm gonna briefly cover that next. So the pattern has us do edging on this and it's only on the sides and it's just helping you to stabilize the edge as well. So you wanna start off and you're going to attach your yarn in and you'll chain, uh, sorry, attach it and then chain two. Doesn't count as anything and you want to apply one half double crochet equally spaced. So if it's ruffling, like it's causing extra ruffles, it means that you're moving too slow and if it's starting to pull and contract like this, it means that you're moving too quickly. So stay within the chain work itself and just equally space out your half double crochets across. Experienced crocheters, you probably, probably should not have a problem with this but you can lay it down if you have a surface and just to test it once in a while as you're moving across to get an idea on how fast you should be moving. Okay, so you just keep doing that and just continue to do it. So there's no um, stitch counts to hit. You just gotta equally space and therefore you'll get to the other side of your blanket and then that's where you'll fasten off and then you'll do the same with the other side here. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back and I'll show you how to weave in your ends with the tapestry needle just in case that's new for you as well. I'll be back in a moment. So I've now just worked my way all the way across and I've stretched it a little bit. Remember that this particular stitch right here does contract and you do actually see that in the sample too. So once you have all the way across then you'll do the other side but what I'm gonna demonstrate now is just to fasten off. So just taking a tapestry needle, any loose ends that you will have including all the ones that you see here, you wanna put it through a tapestry needle to hide it in. So to do that you're just gonna go back through the stitch work itself, ignore the edge piece. Like don't go on the outside here where people will look, will look at. Stay within the stitch work itself and just back and forth a total of three times. If you've been following me through the years you know that this is what we normally do and the longer that you drag it underneath the less likely it'll fall out on you. And so you go back and forth and then shape it and if you wanna damp block it you can. We have videos for that and this is a really neat concept and it's a fabulous little stitch sampler and you can pick up some tips and ideas for maybe some projects in the future. This is it for now. This is the Texture World Crochet Blanket and I think it's amazing. So until next time, have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.